So I have a proposition for you. Let me know what you think. I'm gonna give you a thousand dollars and then next year you give me five thousand dollars because you know, you'll owe me. Oh, what's that? That's $4,000 more than I gave you. And you think that a 400% interest rate is a little ridiculous, especially when the personal loan and credit card interest rates I've criticized in my recent fake rich flexing video were only 20 to 30% in comparison. Oh, and what's that? I'm having a conversation with myself to introduce a topic and drive home a point. I would never. Okay, yes, I would. And while that sketch may have been debatably lame, something that is not debatable is the insanely predatory nature of something called payday loans. How the do payday lenders sleep at night? I have no idea on how very they do comfortable it. mattresses paid on the desperation of hurting people. 690% interest. Is disgusting. there a bigger scam in America? Maybe you've seen these shops out and about town hyping up the promise of instant cash, or you might have seen ads for payday loans without even realizing it across social media. Videos about how you can quickly fund your next vacation, pay your rent without worry, or get the cash you need for whatever it is on your shopping list. The quote, if something seems too good to be true, it probably is, should honestly be the tagline of payday loans. Because that is what they are, too good to be true. They lure you in with these big promises promises of money only to trap you. And as folks continue feeling financial crunches from unemployment to inflation, not to mention the new ways predatory companies are targeting young people on social media, the temptation will be stronger than ever to try one of these payday loan companies. Which is exactly why I wanted to talk about the predatory world of payday loans in this video. More specifically, let's talk about why they're so predatory, what advertising strategies these companies use to target vulnerable people, and what alternatives are out there if you do need cash quick. But before that, if you are new here, I'm Kara, and I make videos on the intersection of money, media, and intentional living. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, be sure to subscribe and you can check out my other video essays I have playlists on, or my most recent one on how timeshares keep you poor. By the way, side note, because I'm sure someone's gonna mention it in the comments, I am moving right now, which is why my background is gone and is so blank. I tried sprucing it up with some succulents and this jade tree thing that my grandma gave me, but it's a little plain, I know. And one thing I often discuss on this channel is this concept of being a conscious consumer, AKA being really mindful about the ways that our consumption habits affect society, the environment, and our personal finances. One thing that I've started thinking about a lot in the past few years is the idea of quality over quantity. For clothes, this means buying things that feel good and are meant to last so that I don't fall into that fast fashion trap where you only wear things an average of seven to 10 times before throwing it out. Eek. And that is just one reason why I am so excited to partner with today's sponsor, Bombas. You might know Bombas for their socks, and let me tell you, they live up to the hype. They are honestly the comfiest socks I have ever worn. I've had a few pairs since last Christmas when my parents got me some, so I knew about them before they even reached out to me, and I love them. I don't know if you guys are like me, but the way that my socks fit for me in the morning kind of sets the tone for the rest of my day. Like if I have a pair of socks that are slipping off the heel or they feel really scratchy, I just already feel meh. But I swear, I feel a little giddy when I know that it's a Bombas day for my feet. Sounds lame, I know. Because the material just feels so high quality with Bombas. And I got one of their shirts too. It's this white t-shirt right here. And same thing, it almost feels buttery to wear. I like Bombas so much because to me, it feels like clothing that is really meant to last and can be a staple in your closet. Not to mention, Bombas has an incredible mission behind it. For every item that is purchased, the same kind of item is donated. Because socks, underwear, t-shirts, all things that Bombas sells, those are all the most highly requested items in homeless shelters. And Bombas's mission has led them to donating over a hundred million items so far. So if you're interested in trying out Bombas yourself, you can get 20% off your first purchase with my code Kara20 at checkout. Head to bombas.com slash Kara and use the code Kara20 to get yourself some cozy socks or shirts or underwear or whatever else you're looking for. And thank you so much to Bombas for sponsoring today's video. So definition time, what exactly is a payday loan? The name kind of gives it away, but it's essentially a loan that's supposed to help people who need some quick cash before their next paycheck. 
Say you're living paycheck to paycheck, you really need $500 to make rent on Monday, but you don't get paid until Friday. In that case, you might explore a payday loan to get you that $500 within a day so that you can get rent paid on time. Sounds good so far, right? Honestly, it seems like it serves a real purpose. Well, like most grifty, predatory worlds that we cover on this channel, from timeshares to multi-level marketing schemes to life insurance scams, the problem is in the details. See, the four hallmark qualities of a payday loan are as follows. Number one, very short term. So where a personal loan from a bank might have the payment due in a year or years, a payday loan has a super fast turnaround. The expectation is that you pay back the payday loan by the time of your next paycheck, usually around two weeks. Second quality, small amounts of money. So this isn't like a home loan where you're taking out hundreds of thousands of dollars. These loans are meant to be much smaller to cover things like rent or emergencies. So they range anywhere from 100 to $1,000, but they can creep up into the thousands. Third quality, very easy to get. As in, payday loans typically do not require a credit score check, something that many other loans do require to make sure that you're likely able to actually pay off the loan. If anything, that's a huge selling point payday loans like to advertise. If you have awful credit, you can still get our loans. And as we'll talk about later when we discuss how these companies target people, this is actually part of their predatory strategy. And the last hallmark quality of a payday loan, like I hinted at earlier, are wildly high interest rates. Like way beyond anything I've seen while researching for my videos, I was actually quizzing my family on what they thought the average interest rate for a payday loan was, and they were already guessing high numbers like 50 I mean, 50% would already be an insane interest rate. You would want to get rid of that debt like the bubonic plague. Credit cards, which are infamously predatory with their interest rates, have an average rate of around 22% these days. But the real interest rate for a typical payday loan, according to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, it's 400%. And some averages are even higher than that, depending on what US state you look at. This 2023 map shows a breakdown of the state-by-state -state averages, with some states like Texas and Missouri having interest rates over 650%. Now you'll also notice something from this map that restored some of my faith in our legislative branch, which is that not every state permits payday loans. Those grayed out states in the map are states where high cost payday lending is not allowed. It's a move that those states should be proud of because they're better protecting consumers and likely saving those consumers millions of dollars in fees. Not to mention the social turmoil that comes when someone gets stuck in the payday loan trap. See, because of those wildly high interest rates that we talked about before, some people get stuck in this payday loan trap that they cannot possibly keep up with the payments. Take the example that I started this video with. You need $1,000 for some emergency that popped up. So you take a payday loan of $1,000 out thinking that by next paycheck, you'll surely be able to cover it. Well, life happens. And if you were already in a tough spot financially with no emergency fund, chances are pretty high you'll still be in that tough spot in two weeks when the payment is due. And so you continue to owe that $1,000 plus the extra fees that get tacked on at the standard $15 per $100 fee. Meaning in two weeks, you owe $1,150. $50. In six months, you owe $2,950. And in one year, you owe $4,900. And that is just if you take out one payday loan. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau found that three out of four payday loans go to borrowers who take out 10 or more loans per year. That is interest on interest on interest into a vortex that will drain you financially. It's like a money shark NATO. And yes, I did just say that so I can remind the world of the cultural phenomenon that was and is Sharknado. As explained by American Progress's article titled Young People Are Payday Lenders' Newest Prey, payday loans are often used to cover reoccurring expenses versus one-time expenses like emergencies. So these might be reoccurring payments like rent, transportation, or even student loan repayments. One of the many problems with this is that payday loans, which are already designed to screw over consumers, are extra not designed with reoccurring expenses in mind. Think of it like a treadmill. You're running and getting tired, and then you're offered the chance for the treadmill to slow down by five notches, but 
only if after a minute it speeds up by five notches from where you first started. This pattern repeats over and over. Each time you might feel a small relief when the notches go down, but soon you're still running even during the breaks. And now your original run has become a full on sprint. And if you're now spending a bulk of your income trying to keep up with just the interest from these predatory loans, let alone the loan itself, that's money that isn't going to things you might really need, like paying your normal bills or buying groceries, or even beyond necessities, that's money that isn't going into local businesses or the broader economy because your disposable income is now gone. I mentioned that point because I feel like it's really easy for those of us who aren't in the debt vortex to feel like that world isn't really affecting us. I mean, I don't have a payday loan and I know not to get one, so beyond feeling sympathy, what's the matter? In my opinion, it is a lot more connected than that. For one, payday loans drain Americans of billions of dollars a year. That's billions that could be going to local restaurants, to paying for annual dentist appointments, to local artisans or farmers. Basically, that's money that could be distributed more widely throughout the economy rather than lining the pockets of payday loan collectors. And second, that level of spiraling debt causes social turmoil. It sends people who are already in a financially unstable place into even more precarious situations. And as research suggests, suggests economic hardship leads to net negatives for society, like crime, violence, and homelessness. These are social ills that aren't only morally wrong for many, but they also cost us a ton of money every year. So even if something like predatory payday loans feels far removed from our day-to-day -day lives, their predatory nature and corruption still affect us. But back to those who are taking out the loans. According to the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, 80% of people don't pay back payday loans in the set two weeks. And this is not a bug of the payday loan system, it's a feature. As in, payday loan companies target people who they believe won't pay back the loans quickly, because if they did, how would they trap you into a 400% annual percentage rate? Which leads us to talking about who these companies are targeting and what advertising strategies they're using to lure you in. Hey, anyone else can say Cassian like, Like every, like all the time on their fucking for you page. Just fucking every third video is that. I'm not taking your payday. Social media has become a popular way for payday loan companies to advertise to their newest targets, Gen Z. According to a 2018 survey by CNBC, quote, among those who are 18 to 21 years old, almost 40% have strongly contemplated taking out a so-called payday loan. You might've even come across these videos while scrolling. It'll be someone talking about easy places to find a loan or some quick cash without any credit check, and they'll list various companies to check out. But if you look deeper at those companies, they are nothing more than payday loan companies. For example, let's take a look at this TikTok I found where this guy is walking through different companies to check out for a loan. The first company he lists is called Money Mutual, so let's Google it. Yeah. Well, that was fast. It straight up says payday loans in the tagline. So we know what that is. And let's just see real quick. They've got a nice 1.8 stars on Google. Awesome. With one review calling out, quote, horrible rates with crazy fees and quote, I wish I had never used this service. And then we got one dude just leaving the word scammers, short and sweet, I like it. What I don't like is that this website boasts this weirdly self-congratulatory mission statement where they're like, why we do what we do. And then go on to say, about how people are living paycheck to paycheck, so they feel it's their duty to provide solutions and education. And granted, I do appreciate that they have this little section about responsible borrowing, but it feels a little disingenuous when right above it, you have a section on the key benefits of unsecured loans and a breakdown of the main criteria to get a payday loan, which is as simple as be 18 and make at least $800 a month. I know I'm picking on this one website, but this situation is not unique. Tons of payday loan companies are out there doing this exact same thing, and they're being advertised in person and online, specifically to the people most vulnerable for financial instability. It's like kicking people while they're already down. Or some ads are not just kicking people while they're down, they are actively luring people in for kicks by dangling dreams of money flexing in front of them. Like this clip that I showed in my video on fake rich flexing vacations edition comes to mind. I just got a $4,000 loan sent straight to my bank account. I'm freaking out, dude, because now I can go on vacation. This kind of advertising 
isn't just preying on people's desperation for bills to be paid, but also our desperation to spend beyond our means, from new experiences to new gadgets. I went on a vacation I probably shouldn't have went on, um, and that's when a payday loan came in. No. Yes. It's a shame to see because I know that these people don't live in vacuums. Meaning that we are constantly being influenced by media or those around us telling us that we need more. We have the fear of missing out, we feel like we have to flex, and that can lead many to spending beyond their means. And for some who fall into the wrong financial schemes like payday loans, that overspending can get them trapped into crazy predatory debt. With all this in mind, before I end the video, I think it's worth quickly covering some of the alternatives to payday loans. Also, yes, acknowledging that on top of the things that I'm gonna cover here, having systemic changes to the way that we approach healthcare costs, housing costs, the laws permitting predatory lending, those are also relevant here. It's why, for my Americans out there, make sure you are registered to vote and vote in your national and local elections. I'm gonna link down below vote.org's website where you can check whether or not you are registered to vote, so go make sure you do that. But regarding alternatives for payday loans, there is a spectrum of options. Some much better than others, but I would argue that all of these are way better than a payday loan. On the better side, you have the following. One, ask to borrow money from friends and family. Obviously not an option for everyone, but if you can manage it, it's probably a much better option than taking out a payday loan. Similarly, some nonprofits will offer assistance for things like food, rent, and utilities, so you can look into whether those are an option. You can also ask your employer for a paycheck advance. Essentially, you make an arrangement with your employer to get paid a little earlier this time. Honestly, it's pretty rare and definitely a case-by-case -case basis, but it might be worth trying. Another great option is checking out your local credit union. Credit unions are awesome. They're not-for-profit financial institutions that are owned by the members, so if you're a member of a credit union, you might be able to find a really competitive loan to borrow money. There are also the options of getting some quick cash by selling some things you own, trying to negotiate with the people you owe money to, or picking up extra hours at work or in the gig economy. And if for some reason you really can't do any of those options, a lot of experts will recommend using a credit card rather than using a payday loan. Both are not good, to be clear. Best practice is to not use a credit card to spend money that you don't actually have. And they both have wildly high interest rates. But if you're comparing a like 25% interest rate with a credit card to a 400% interest rate with a payday loan, at that point it really is just lesser of two evils. At the end of the day though, one of the best ways to address this problem is with preventative measures. That's why something like an emergency fund, which is usually six months of expenses and something like a high yield savings account is so critical. Emergency funds help protect us from unexpected financial issues that pop up and they help keep us out of traps that you might find in places like the predatory world of payday loans. But what do you think? Have you ever used a payday loan before or do you know someone who has? And if so, what was their experience or your experience? Let me know in the comments below and what topics you wanna see me cover next. And if you like this video, I think you'll really like my video on the viral TikTok scam. It's all about life insurance scams. So go and check that one out after this. Thank you so much to my patrons on Patreon for supporting this channel, as well as those on Buy Me A Coffee for always supporting. I appreciate you guys so, so much. Thank you for watching and getting this far and I will see you next time. Bye.